Добрий день, шановні глядачі. Дезінформація, пропаганда, фейки змушують медіа галузь усього світу об'єднуватися у боротьбі проти них. Сьогодні ми у Скоп'є, і ми проводимо проєкт спільно з організацією Civil і Use for Media за фінансової підтримки північного Рейн-Вестфалія. І ми поговоримо з керівником проєкту «Журналістика спротиву» Джабіром Дирала. Hi, Javier. Uh, thank you Hi, for agreeing Javier. for this interview. Uh, and could you please uh, describe your professional ba- background in media industry? Well, having in mind I'm 55, uh, it's uh, rather uh, a long list of things uh, I w- I've been working in the past uh, 35 years. Mainly I was and I still am in the media industry. Uh, and uh, I, wor- I worked uh, as a journalist since I'm 20. Uh, well, that's uh, that's been uh, uh, quite a period of uh, of challenges, of opportunities that I uh, managed to grab. Uh, it is a, a rather an area of human rights and freedoms, uh, social justice uh, uh, that I I've, I've been covering ever since. Uh, also in the green issues, in the green area, uh, in the green issues area, I was uh, doing quite a few things. Uh, but uh, since uh, some uh, more than 10 years, I would say if you, uh, about 15 years, I uh, started being specialized in uh, uh, disinformation and propaganda, uh, particularly in the light of uh, the hate propaganda within the, the inter-ethnic relations and since uh, the beginning of the war in uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, of the aggression against Ukraine, Ukraine in 2014, Uh, I uh, started uh, digging more deeply into the Russian propaganda, Russian hybrid uh, warfare that has been conducted uh, against uh, Ukraine, but also against the whole democratic world. That would be uh, in short. Thank you very much. Uh, Mass media were once called the fourth power. Which number does it take in the North Macedonia? Well, I would still say that it's uh, quite high on uh, on the list of the most powerful uh, uh, entities or activities in the public discourse. Uh, uh, but the thing is that uh, the media uh, landscape in uh, North Macedonia, just as uh, in many other countries in the region and much wider, uh, the media are now uh, connected uh, uh, or under influence or controlled also by power centers in the politics and in the business. Uh, I would even say in the underground uh, uh, organized crime, uh, there are centers that uh, try to to control uh, media as much as possible. So in North Macedonia, uh, many media, a large portion of the media landscape is occupied, uh, controlled, financed uh, by Uh, power centers within the country and also foreign centers, power centers. Uh, Mainly uh, uh, here I mean uh, uh, Moscow, Kremlin. So internal situation is pretty understandable. Uh, We have kind of the same story. Uh, What about the external information? How do you think uh, people in other countries uh, know uh, enough about North Macedonia and what happens here? I would say that uh, North Macedonia was uh, on the uh, uh, on the cover pages several times in the last 30 years, 31 years of of its independence uh, as a as a country. Uh, and you know, uh, when a country like North Macedonia uh, uh, arrives to the cover pages of the Western press, that means it's something bad that is going on. Uh, so that's that's how we were on the cover pages in 2001 when there was a, an armed conflict in the country, ethnic conflict. Uh, then we were uh, here, uh, we were on the on the Western cover pages uh, uh, also when uh, when there was a, an attack uh, uh, against uh, the the parliament in 2017. Before that, we we arrived to the cover pages of the Western press. Uh, with the huge scandal of uh, wiretapping uh, 26,000 uh, in, uh, uh, citizens of Macedonia uh, by the, the regime of Gruevski, uh, 
we were on the cover pages in 2016 when uh, a tiny little town in the central part of the country uh, wo became famous for uh, hosting a group of, uh, uh, of, of uh, producers of disinformation and propaganda uh, meddling in the, in the United States elections uh, uh, on the side of uh, uh, former President Trump. And uh, okay, uh, we are we are uh, uh, on the other side, uh, also a country that is striving for democracy. We just uh, uh, got the opportunity to start negotiation process uh, with the EU, uh, uh, the European Union, uh, which we uh, ex uh, waited for for 17 years, not not less, but 17 years uh, to start to begin. And of course, we were uh, uh, many times uh, 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 a country that uh, that showed uh, a great uh, hospitality, including the 1999 refugee crisis during the Kosovo War, uh, uh, and also being a, a country where refugees uh, would uh, arrive uh, uh, from different uh, parts uh, of the of the world, including the latest uh, war. Uh, against uh, Ukraine, uh, conducted by the Russian Federation, um, and that's also uh, uh, an opportunity for the for the Macedonian society, the Macedonian uh, uh, state, uh, be on the more positive in, under the more positive light, uh, let's say in uh, in uh, in the Western press. But yes, uh, we are known uh, at least in Europe, but also much wider. And. Uh can you say, in your opinion, uh, how conserved is the media industry, media space uh, here in the country? Well, uh, the media uh, landscape in uh, North Macedonia is uh, rather complicated. Uh, I don't think we are an exception from uh, other countries uh, uh, where the democracy uh, faces uh, quite a few challenges. Uh, uh, I would say in the Balkans, uh, uh, in the entire Balkan, more, more specifically Western Balkan countries, uh, the media are uh, uh, poor, first of all. Uh, the, the journalism as a profession uh, is not popular anymore. Uh, there are fewer and fewer students uh, applying for uh, uh, studying journalism. Uh, the latest figure, I think, is uh, that not more than 15 students uh, applied for, for uh, journalistic studies in, uh, in North Macedonia in the last year. Uh, and uh, that uh, also uh, is a, a, an area, a profession, in which uh, uh, the workers in media uh, are not protected, uh, neither socially, not even their security is guaranteed. Now there are some changes in the law. The parliament just passed a, a, a regulation in which an attack uh, uh, on a journalist means an attack on an official person, uh, but still uh, there is a long way to, to, to see that implemented. Uh, journalists are very, very uh, badly paid, the, the, the wages are very low, uh, their social security is not uh, uh, the best uh, in the country, to the contrary, they are somewhere in the, in the lower part of the list of, of uh, social benefits that uh, they may enjoy. The, the, the employment is not steady, and moreover, uh, the, the, the business sector is not interested in sponsoring media in a proper way, but to control media through uh, their money. Uh, the, the country is suffering from a, from a very low quality of, uh, of the journalist uh, work, not because we have bad journalists, to, to the contrary, we have excellent journalists. I think that the level, the professional level of, of, of some of the, of many journalists uh, is uh, very high, uh, equal to, to the best Western standards. Uh, but then the situation in the country is such that uh, these professionals are uh, facing uh, the, the challenges to, to uh, pay for their daily bread from one to another month, and that's, that's really worrying, and that's how they are uh, a subject to, uh, to controls, uh, to, to control, to, to, um, uh, to intimidation even, uh, but also of pressure of the different types, including the social pressure. 
and which makes it a good background for propaganda and brainwash. Absolutely. Let's talk a bit about that. Uh, how do you think is uh, are these concepts uh, analyzed by the practitioners enough and uh, are there any research or expert discussion about these topics and do they provide any recommendations to the government? Uh, you know, um, I'll be very honest to you. And I'll tell you that uh, there are researches, analyses, recommendations practically produced on a daily basis. Uh, 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 think tank organizations, NGOs, are taking the, uh, uh, the courage and the, the, I would say even arrogance to uh, analyze media on a daily basis and uh, provide all sorts of uh, knowledge and recommendations on how media should be uh, introduced, uh, uh, improved and, and helped and everything. Uh, so they, they're picking up the most of the, the attention while media are still sinking into the, the, the well-known problems with the, the financial and uh, political uh, and uh, uh, social and security and other uh, uh, types of challenges every day. And uh, yes, there are researches, there are an analysis of the media landscape, of, of the media conduct, and many of those uh, authors are actually uh, part of uh, some structures that uh, are uh, uh, threatening the quality and uh, the integrity of journalism in, in North Macedonia. And I think it's not the, the uh, sole uh, example in the Balkans. Uh, I see that in Serbia, I see that in Kosovo, I see that in other uh, Western Balkan countries as well, in which uh, big think tank organizations are digesting uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of euros and dollars to, uh, to give uh, training to media, to analyze them, to monitor them, and to provide recommendations that uh, mean nothing uh, to, to, the every, uh, uh, to the everyday life uh, of the media, the people that are actually producing the media contents in, in the country. You mentioned that it takes courage to work with these topics. Uh, are the journalists oppressed because of that? Journalists uh, are, uh, as, uh, I, I have to repeat, journalists are facing uh, challenges uh, in their work on on daily basis. Uh, they are uh, they have to uh, 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 dig into the, the the events, into the connections, into the into the processes. Uh, uh, and to uh, bring a, a real uh, uh, independent uh, uh, news to, to fulfill their public responsibility, their, uh, their social responsibility to the citizens, to bring information to them, to bring also opinion to them, because media are also opinion places where opinion uh, are published and where the, the social, the political dialogue is, is taking place. And uh, yes, uh, they are under pressure uh, financially, they are under political pressure, they are under pressure from, uh, from other media uh, owners and uh, structures that are not uh, really media, they are propaganda centers, but uh, disguised as media or uh, non-governmental organizations, and they are actually uh, 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 pressurizing the journalists on a daily, daily basis. Uh, journalists are also under threat uh, on social networks where all sorts of bots and trolls are threatening their lives. Uh, they are also being attacked physically uh, on a number of occasions. We have uh, such uh, examples also uh, during the, the democratic uh, uh, period uh, of, of development of the country in the last several years. We had uh, a number of incidents in which, in which nationalists uh, uh, attack uh, journalists, uh, both verbally and even physically at, at occasions, uh, for doing their job. Uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, if they are uh, progressive, then they are uh, uh, completely, completely under uh, siege of, of hate propaganda against them. If they are trying to bring uh, real le relevant uh, news about what is going on in, uh, in Ukraine at the moment, they are uh, proclaimed to be traitors and uh, to be Western spies and so on. Uh, including myself, uh, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's quite difficult nowadays to produce uh, real uh, media uh, uh, outputs 
uh, that uh, uh, are uh, uh, pro providing uh, citizens with relevant information because the propaganda is so strong, it's so well paid, uh, and it's so well entrenched within the society and the media landscape that uh, it's pretty difficult, to say the least. Uh, how do you think? Should propaganda be criminalized by media law? Uh, well, when, when it comes to media and when it comes to freedom of speech, things are very complicated. And whenever you, you try to regulate it, uh, then uh, it's always a danger that you will over-regulate it. And when uh, over-regulation takes place, then uh, freedom of speech is uh, dying. Uh, if, if you just leave it like that, then uh, propaganda is using the democratic tools, the, 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 the democracy itself, to, to kill democracy. So uh, it's, a, a, it's a million dollar question. Uh, I don't have a, a real answer to that. I think that the, what we should do is to uh, maintain our course of bringing the truth and bringing different opinions uh, on board to maintain the, the, the vivid, the vibrant, the dynamic uh, political and social dia dialogue in the country, in the society and wider. And uh, uh, what we need to do is to promote uh, uh, values, uh, high professional standards and values uh, the, among the, the community, the journalist community, and to promote solidarity. And of course, work, uh, uh, work with others in other countries to, to provide uh, each other some, uh, uh, any sort of support that we can provide. And of course, uh, uh, if I may, uh, 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 the, the, the donors in the, in the democratic countries uh, should consider uh, a new plan for, for support of media and democracy in these countries because it's abused. Uh, because uh, propaganda and criminal and political centers are uh, infiltrated within the, the most uh, sensitive sectors within societies and actually are using uh, Western money to uh, promote and to uh, uh, conduct anti-Western anti uh, propaganda. And that's, that's something that, uh, that should be also rethought, I mean, to give it another thought to, uh, in, in the centers where, where uh, the support for democratic processes are uh, being decided and, and provided. Uh, well, this sounds all uh, a little bit complicated, but yes, this, uh, uh, this is a, a very complicated area. Uh, we need to understand that uh, very long ago, uh, the, the, the hybrid warfare started and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been waged uh, against democ democracy, uh, against the democracy in these countries, also in the West, whilst uh, the, the business uh, uh, centers and political centers were in a romantic, idyllic uh, hug with Putin and with uh, similar uh, 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 characters like Putin. And that's why we, we see these challenges now in the, also in the European Union countries where uh, all sorts of far-right uh, uh, groups, uh, terrorist groups uh, are being uh, 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 nurtured or popping up uh, 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 across the, the continent and where the, the far-right uh, uh, political parties are gaining more and more power and even gaining uh, 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 governments, uh, government power in, in, in some of the countries, as you know. So that's, that's a complicated question. Uh, the, the answer must be uh, uh, comprehensive, decisive, uh, multi-leveled, uh, uh, multi multidisciplinary uh, and uh, it has to be uh, 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 deci decided uh, that we must bring a decision that we will prevail otherwise we will lose the, this, this uh, 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 war against democra uh, democracy in, in Europe and in the world. Thank you very much for the interview. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Дякуємо, шановні глядачі. З вами в студії працювала Катерина Соколова. Шукаємо правду разом.